What's up Dragon Nation, I'm Rich with Dragon Nation Gaming. Welcome back to Minecraft. Last episode we were working on an XP farm, but as we saw it took way too long to get enough XP to really do anything. So I decided to look some stuff up and see if there was an easier way of getting XP. And what I found was a zero tick uh, XP system that it took me a little while to figure out how it actually works, but I think we got it. Hopefully, well, we're gonna go ahead and try to build it in Minecraft today I'm gonna to try to explain as much as I know about the system and why it works But yeah, it's gonna be a little bit difficult, but let's go ahead and get this episode started I'm still trying to figure out this system because I'm not 100% sure why it works or how it works. All I know is that it does. I've actually had it in my survival world and it seems to be working pretty good. What we need to start out with is a building block and then we're going to need redstone torches on either of the two sides. Now that we have that, what we need above that is something for our plant to grow on. And then we need to be able to shift those blocks back and forth. And the way we're going to be doing that is with sticky piston. So what we need is a stick. Oh, no. Let's try right here. We're going to need a sticky piston on either side. Okay. Just right there. That'll be fine. Actually, I think it needs to go. Yeah, it needs to go right here. There we go. So what's going to happen is when we send a redstone circuit to this piston, it will push it to that piston and the sticky pistons are going to hold it. And then we need to figure out how the rest of this works. If I'm not mistaken, what we do is next we go ahead and put down uh, building blocks and then we put down some redstone. Now what's going to happen is I think the redstone torch will actually activate the block that's above it. So right now the redstone torch should be activating this block, which should be activating this redstone. But what we need to do is bring the circuit to that piston so that way we can actually have it extend. The way we're going to do that is with a building block. So as you can see, it just keeps going back and forth. This one is not activating, so we need to put a block there as well. Is that going to work? That's not going to work? Okay, it's going to be a little prick. Uh, it's because this block right here is not moving, so we need to... Well, it should extend, right? I don't know. Let me check this out real quick. I probably also need to sleep here in a minute. So yeah, I'm still trying to figure out how to change the sun rotation so that way it's always daytime. I haven't figured that out yet, I'm still looking it up. But now that we have these blocks set up, what we need to do is set up a piston. I think this is how the system continues to work. Put a system here and here, and as you can see, now they just go back and forth. But we need to be able to shut that system off, so what we gotta do is either move that block so the connection is cut Ooh, wow that is loud or move that block right there we're going to do that with the sticky piston so i need back here so we're going to put a sticky piston oh nope like that all right now that we got the sticky piston what we're going to need is a lever so that way we can shut that piston off Alright, is that the... Oh, I need it right below it, don't I? There we go. Alright, now the lever... There. We'll get rid of these. So now when we turn that on, it will extend the piston, but when we turn the lever back off, it will pull that block and shut the entire system off. And thank God, because that was loud as shit. So that's pretty much how the system kind of works. All I know is that it... Puts a redstone signal into these blocks, and for some reason, when these blocks shift, it causes a plant to grow. Now, the plant will grow like every eight minutes. It will grow one piece. 
I'm not exactly sure. That's something I hadn't figured out quite yet. But I'm working on it. So what we're going to start out with right now is we're going to start out with the bamboo. So we need to see if the system works. I don't think it's going to work right now because there's a few things that I need to do. But if we look, right now the bamboo is just a sprout, basically. If we turn on the system, it'll just break that bamboo. So what we need to do is we actually need to grow it just one. So let's go ahead and grab some bone meal real quick. We'll let it grow one high. There we go. Now we can go ahead and turn the system back on. And as you can see, now the bamboo actually stays. That one I had to look up because I couldn't get it to work. So let's go ahead and break that stock and we can see that it grows pretty damn fast. Damn, it really does grow fast. Alright, so now what we're going to need is a system. Let me go ahead and shut this off. We're going to need a system to actually push or break that bam bamboo when it does actually grow. Now the cool thing is we do have some redstone right there that's got us set up. So we're going to... We're going to grab an observer if I could ever start talking English. It's always difficult for me. We're going to put an observer right. Am I too low? There we go. And then what I need is a piston that will actually line up with that second uh, piece of stock. So I need it right there. Oh, let's go down right there. We'll get rid of that piston right there. So now when I turn the system on, we can see that this is actually going to go pretty quick. It's not... Oh, yeah. Because I forgot to put the redstone here. There we go. Now check out all that damn bamboo just falling to the ground. So what we're going to need is a pickup system for all this stuff. But this is pretty much how the system works out. Now keep in mind, if you do build this in a cave, the bamboo does require light to actually grow uh, another thing that I found out is if we take a building block and put it right behind the bamboo I don't think it will grow oh and of course it's gonna make a liar out of me why the hell not how about on the sides I don't know why but in survival it wouldn't work for me putting a block right behind it was actually stopping it so I don't know if that's a thing that has to do with creative or survival. I have no idea. But I even turned down the block sounds. And they're still pretty damn loud. I'll probably have to do it a little bit more. But what we're going to need is a pickup system. And the only thing I'm going to do is I'm going to do that with water. Flowing water, which does a pretty good job and it's pretty simple. But once we pick that stuff up, we need to figure out a furnace system... And then we need to figure out a disposal system to get rid of all of the uh, green dye that we'll be cooking. So I'm guessing the way this works is what we have is the redstone torch is, huh, I need to stop saying is. All right, the redstone torch sends a current to this block right here, which init or sends a redstone current to this piece of redstone which in turn sends it to this block when that piston is, ex is extended which then sends it to the piston which will extend sending it sending the redstone to this piston which will push yeah I I think that's how it works let me go ahead and turn this on let's turn down options let's go to music and sounds let's go ahead and turn blocks down a little bit more because that shit is loud. So let's see if I'm right about this. I think I am. That's pretty much how it works is the redstone torch is sending current to uh, this grass block. Which sends current to that redstone block. Which is sending it to that block. Which sends it to the piston. And when the piston extends it sends the redstone to that piston which then pushes the ground or that grass block and then of course on the other side it does it the same way but because the uh, ground is actually shifting 
these redstones are initiated or there's a current through them at different times making this piston and that piston activate at different times so every other tick so I think that's the way it works I'm not 100% sure but I think that's it let's go ahead and turn that off before it irritates the hell out of me so now what we need to talk about is a pickup system because we need a way of getting all of the bamboo and the cactus so what we're gonna do is we're gonna set up the same system for the cactus with the piston now the thing about cactus is if we go ahead and grab uh, some sand and then we put down a piece of cactus is when the cactus grows this block right here the piston will actually break it but the problem is is a lot of times the cactus will fall on top of the cactus that breaks off will fall on top of this cactus and get destroyed so the piston is actually really good for piss, uh, pushing uh, I keep wanting to say piston this piston is good for pushing the cactus off into I guess we'll set up a water system probably be the easiest way of doing it just bring the water out this way and then figure out how to make it into an L and then have it picked up by furnaces but yeah I think that'll work let's go ahead and give it a shot and see all right so there's one cactus so obviously I can tell that the cactus is a little bit slower than the bamboo which is good because it's going to take a lot more bamboo I think it takes four bamboo to cook one piece of cactus I think so we're gonna need a whole lot more bamboo than we need cactus so I might actually have to build multiple of these devices probably I don't know I'll have to get into the survival world let it run and see which runs out faster so what we need to do now is we actually need to find a cleanup system from the furnace to get rid of some of that green dye so we'll go ahead uh, set up a furnace right here so that way we have a little bit of room to kind of maneuver and figure things out a little bit so we'll put the furnace there and we'll get rid of these blocks so what we're gonna need now is we're gonna need a hopper to actually pull those items out of the furnace so I actually need to hit shift there we go and then what we're gonna use to get rid of those items is a dropper but the problem with the dropper is you need a redstone signal into it in order to activate it I thought when I first did this oh I need a whole shift I thought I could do it a lever with a lever but the lever only activates it for one tick so what I need is a redstone contraption that will actually move that dropper around or the redstone around on a clock so every other tick it will initiate that dropper now I tried figuring this out and I think I can remember how it works what we're gonna need is a pretty cool ass uh, device right here this is called the comparator what I guess this does is it will read the item that it is connected to uh, it will read its inventory if it has items it will activate that block so what we need that block to activate is a sticky piston and then what we're gonna do is let me go ahead and get an observer I need to make sure I don't use any other block for that and I think this is how it works what we need is the observer nope that's the wrong way I think it's this way on top of that piston and then we need another observer on top of the comparator so <clears throat> once the uh, furnace has an item that goes to the drop uh, goes through the hopper to the dropper uh, the comparator will read the inventory seeing that it does have something inside of it which will send a redstone signal to that piston which will extend this observer and it will huh, 
it will be detected by this observer, which will turn the hopper on. I don't know. I don't know exactly how this works. This is something I actually had to figure out from somebody else. But let's go ahead and we'll go to the furnace. We'll go ahead and put some bamboo and some cactus in there and see how this works out. Let's also go ahead and grab some green dye. We're going to need a little bit to test this out. So there it goes. It worked. It saw that it had inventory inside of the dropper. So it initiated the comparator, which initiated that piston. And yeah, it works. That's pretty cool. So what happens? Oh, it just stays on. Well, that's cool. So what we can do with that, let's go ahead and ah, we'll leave it. What we could do with that is to go ahead and grab some sand and then we'll take a lava bucket and put lava right in that hole. Let's go ahead and grab all this green dye and we'll try this out. Make sure that this actually works. And there we go. Now we're getting, well, not all the green dye. I probably need to build a funnel for it. Let's go ahead and grab the sand real quick. So I think just like this, that should work. Maybe, I don't know, we'll see. All right, so there we go. So if we put another wall right here, it will drop everything into that lava, getting rid of all the green dye that we don't need. Kinda cool. And then with the furnace, we could come up to it. We actually need to turn off that hopper so we're going to need some stone and then we're going to need a lever as well. And I think what I need to do is I need the stone here, right next to the hopper and then the lever right in front of it. So now we can go ahead and shut that hopper off. Yep. Yep. There we go. Now we can go ahead and grab the XP. And as you can tell by the little tings, the little bells, it got us a little bit. So this is a pretty good system. This is how we're going to get rid of everything. But then we need to figure out how to get everything flowing into the furnace. All we're going to do is we're going to set up hoppers. That should be pretty simple, I think. Maybe. So what I'm going to do is because of this, this system and how much it's actually going to get us, I think what I can do is I could do a row of seven or eight furnaces. I think we'll have enough for that. All we have to do is we take hoppers, uh, put one, come on, can I not, there we go. Put one behind it. That's for the uh, fuel and then one on top. Come on, back me up. There you go. And then one on top and that is for the cactus. And we'll have a row of seven or eight furnaces. And then we'll just have water which flows the items into the hoppers. So yeah, this system's going to take a little while to get backed up so that way it's uh, efficient. But you know, it's a pretty good system. Also, another thing I just thought of is if we have a row of eight furnaces, let me actually try this out. What we need to do is, okay, go away you, is have a river system. Is that enough blocks? I don't think it's gonna be. Let's get rid of these ones right here. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Then what we need is some water and we don't want it to interfere with the lava. We just want it to go as far as just before the lava, just like that. So now that water should push the uh, green dye from, <clears throat> excuse me, that should push the green dye from all the furnaces into that lava. So that's a good way of getting rid of them. So yeah, it's a pretty difficult system, but let's go ahead and get into survival and see how this works out. All right, so I decided to build the whole thing down in our mine, just so that way it's out of the way of everything else. And 
the noise doesn't get on my nerves. It looks like a couple of the furnaces. Yeah, they've ran out of bamboo. How's this one doing? This one's full. Why is the bamboo? Oh, because it's getting stuck. Really? All right, let's go ahead and fill this one up with bamboo and this one. So yeah, I have been noticing that the bamboo is getting stuck right here in between these uh, hoppers, which is a little bit irritating, but we can go ahead and check the hoppers and see just how well they're doing. So they're filling up okay, but the problem is uh, there's just a lot of hoppers. So I don't think, yeah, see this one, this one's emptying out pretty fast. Uh, there's just a, not enough. Yeah, this one is completely empty. Yep. So what I'm going to have to do is I'm going to have to build like two or three of the bamboo systems. Uh, one thing I also want to check out is... Alright, that one has bamboo. But it's not going to last very long. We're not producing enough bamboo, so I'm going to need two or three. Alright, that one's completely full of cactus. That one's completely... Oh, there it is. So yeah, for seven furnaces, I think what I need to do is... Maybe two or three of each system. I guess I'll build two for each and just see how that works out. If we need to add more, we can. But I want to make sure that I have more bamboo than I actually need. And that really irritates me right there. But yeah, this is only a system of seven furnaces because it was symmetrical. Uh, this is an odd number of wall. So eight just kind of looks stupid. So I decided to only do seven. So we do have the river system in the back. Luckily, the hopper has actually stopped the water. Because that would have been difficult to figure out if it didn't. But let's go ahead and go up here so I can show you guys the system. Oh, and it looks like we're getting some bamboo stuck up there as well. Well, damn it. I guess that's okay. I guess it's not a lossless system. But look at all the bamboo that is dropping down. So we still have a little bit of space in here that we can go ahead and build another system, I think. Yeah, we should have enough room. And then, of course, over here is the cactus. So I don't know. It, it's working pretty well. We just need more because it's not enough for the amount of uh, furnaces that we have. So the channels that I've been watching for help on this stuff is... Uh, one of them is Pixel Riff. I've actually been watching a lot of his videos. Uh, someone in the comments uh, gave me a link to... God, I forget his name. Il Mango. That's his name. I had to look it up real quick because I forgot. Uh, so yeah, someone in the comment of the last video went ahead and gave me a link to his channel where he was doing something kind of like this. Uh, but this system right here, I actually figured out from Pixel Rift, and it's kind of cool. What he had down there was a piece of blue ice, and then a slab right over top of it. Now, the reason for that is it allows things to pass through this, uh, this block right here, and it keeps this path of water from going this way. It's actually a pretty cool system. I probably wouldn't have thought of that on my own. But it's always the simple things. So the system is working pretty well. As I said, I need to go ahead and do a couple of each one. But as you can see, I'm at level 31. These have been running for quite some time. Let's go ahead and shut those hoppers off and see what kind of XP we can get. So we're already up to 32. 33. 34. Oh, that one doesn't have anything. Neither does that one. Well, damn it. All right, this one. 34. Wow. Okay, let's see. I do have... No, I need you. There's a little bit of bamboo. And I think I have some more right here I could go ahead and grab. Okay, bamboo. Would you cook? All right, we're gonna need a little bit more for this furnace and one for this furnace. All right, so 
34. No, I think it was this one. Oh, there it is. 35. 36. Oh, not quite 37. Well, let's try this one. Nope, not quite 37. But that's actually pretty good. We went from level 31 almost up to level 37. And what I've been learning about this game is from level 1 to 30 is the same amount of XP as it is from levels 31 to 40. So that's actually pretty good. That's not half bad. That's going to get us a lot more XP. So about right now, I probably would have gotten up to level 15. Just with that little bit that we've actually run. So not half bad. But yeah, I definitely need to make a couple more systems so we can get some more XP and this stuff doesn't run out. I think all the bamboo that we're missing is falling up there. Uh, that's irritating. But yeah, I left all this open so I can show you guys the system that works pretty well. But yeah, I have a little bit to do on my own. So, we're just about ready. We have the sugarcane farm, which is getting us a ton of books. We now have an XP system that I need to tweak a little bit, but it's getting us a ton of XP. And next episode, I think what we're going to do is we're going to try enchanting books. So that way we can get some more powerful weapons and tools and armor. And then hopefully at some point we can go up against the Ender Dragon. But yeah, we'll worry about all that in the next episode. Until then, make sure to like and subscribe. All that good stuff. I'll see you all in the next one. Peace.